Okay, um, thank you. God bless you. We are, let us re examine, re examine the, the message to the church in Ephesus okay, concerning your first love and your first works. Okay. This is supposed to be the first message to the church in Ephesus. Okay. And this is uh, part of the seven messages that were sent to the seven churches. All these are allegories. There is only one church and there is only one message. Okay, seven in the spiritual sense is the number of perfection, is the number of lights. Just like you see seven in the musical notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. You have seven notes and that, that is the, the sound of music. It's all seven notes that are manipulated in different ways to make music. Okay, you also have light. Light will appear in different forms, but we talk of normally seven principal colors. Okay, which can obviously, you know, be combined to form, you know, many different types of colors. So, seven in reality is one. There's one message, there's one church, the church of the living God. And this message is sent to the church. Now, the church is not a place we meet on Sundays. The church is a universal body of God. It's a universal gathering. And with the eyes of the Spirit, we have to understand that the church, every single human, human soul you see on the earth, both present or departed, all form part of the church okay that's from the eye of the spirit so when you hear a message like this it is a message to the whole world not just to a, a sect or a religious group called church church is a celestial concept church is the body of christ and all are members of that body. Okay, there is only one man in the eye of God, and all are members of that one man. Of course, you can fall out of that realization when you lose consciousness of this fact. When you fall into sin, sin is actually you know you know falling short of falling out of that celestial gathering either you are with me in me as me or against me sin is not to be found in that body sin is transgression against that body okay if you cannot consciously say that I am I am he you are in sin and you are falling away in your sins and your trans trespasses that is the that is the portion of the gentile the gentile, the gentile is the one who is not aware who has lost awareness that I am in that celestial garden which is called the, the body of Christ and it's the body of God. God is found in that assembly. Okay, the church is a celestial garden. So when you hear messages to the church, it's actually a message to bring remembrance, a, remem a message to strengthen you, 
a message to cause you to return back to this union okay it's a message that goes out from age to age causing you to be to work in harmony okay with that celestial body that we call the body of god that is eternal life that is all that you need throughout all eternity just to be found in him to know that i am he know that i am he okay this is the message to awaken to the realization that i am he so this is the um, second chapter of revelations this is a message to the church the message comes from alpha omega which is actually the same voice that worked in the garden of eden we see that in book of genesis chapter one and chapter two a voice that worked in the garden of eden is actually the same voice of i am now you cannot just look at garden of eden as a historical context a historical thing the garden of eden is a present reality and there's a voice walking in that garden and that voice causes you to remain in fellowship with i that i am to be in harmony all right so you cannot hear these messages and understand these messages suddenly um by human comprehension it's by the spirit deep has to speak to deep okay so i'm going to read from chapter 2 verse 1 of revelations unto the angel of the church of ephesus right this thing said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks i know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say the apostles and are not and has found them liars and has born and has patience for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted nevertheless i have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else i will come unto thee and i will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent but this thou hast thou hatest the deeds of the nicolaitans which i also hate he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the church to him that overcometh will i give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of god now this is a wonderful message you could always go back and read it in the good news version i am used to the king james version when you speak like this at times it sounds awkward but we can just pick out by the spirit what the message is intended to do for us okay first of all it speaks about he that walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks and he that has the seven stars in the right hand now that view that why does it start like this it starts like this because it's trying to tell you 
if you want to find yourself at the right hand of God, right hand of God is not a geographical location, but rather a state of being, a state of awareness you attain to when you are in God, with all power, all peace, and all gladness. And it is the place reserved for the for those who rediscover themselves in God. They are found at the right hand of God. Okay, I, I'm, I'm quick to mention that don't expect there's nothing in the sky that there's nobody sitting on a chair in the sky and he puts the good people on the right and the bad people on the left. These are spiritual concepts to be understood spiritually. You can be standing here on earth and be living and dwelling at the right hand of God. It's the place of power, it's the place of favor, it's the place of pleasures, it's the place of the blessing. Okay, the sheep, those of those who, those who can hear the voice of the master, are gathered to the right hand. Okay, these are those who can hear the voice, the same voice of Alpha Omega, which comes like a trumpet. When you hear the message and you understand it and obey it, spontaneously the gates of heaven are open. You are granted access to the right hand of the Father. It's good we understand this stuff, okay? The goats find themselves on the left side, which is the place of the course. Okay, now nobody, God does not curse anybody, but see, you do all these things yourself. When you be, you walk as a goat, that means you, you don't hear. Okay, it speaks about a hardened heart that does not take instruction, that does not heed to instruction. Okay. And what happens is that spontaneously you lose your way out of the realm of life. It's not God punishing you. God does not curse or punish anybody. When a man does not keep himself in truth, he ends up in the lie, in, okay? And he's snared of the devil. And he finds himself in bondage and he suffers the things, the limitation of mortal man. So he starts off by saying, look, I am the one who holds the seven stars in my right hand. And the seven stars are you and I. These are the morning stars. It's a body of angels, of ministers who live on account of the Lord. You see, the seven stars, the morning star are the same thing. The Pleiades. And this is actually the, your gift, your state of being. This is Lucifer. This is your state of being in God. It's pure light, pure consciousness. You are the light of the world. You are the stars of God. Okay, and it says that I am he that walks in the midst of the seven golden sticks. Now, those of you who know the menorah, it's a kind of um, structure, candle lamp stand that had seven stands made of pure gold. Okay, this this if you look at the historical account of the Israelites, you had this structure was in the tabernacle of Moses and later on brought into the temple of Solomon okay it was a candle lamp stand that was beaten out of one lump of gold God had warned Moses to instruct the people that they must get a lump of gold 
that must have been a pretty big lump of gold one lump you could not add two two lumps together and molt molt them together but you had to have one lump and that one lump of gold was beaten out into seven branches okay and those seven branches had they were littered up with with, with uh, fire continuously in the tabernacle of God now that fire was never to be quenched it was, it was to keep on burning and burning continuously okay the the, the, the lampstands were oiled by the by the priests who had access to the tabernacle okay so in the first chapter of the book of Revelation God now reveals the mystery of the seven golden candlesticks okay we can call it the golden lampstand okay that is he reveals that I am I am that candle lampstand eternally and the seven branches are the seven the churches actually represent the church the churches the seven churches which are like i told you is one church so god reveals the interdependence between god and man between you and god god reveals an eternal body in the heavens okay of which we are members now this is a very sacred mystery because what that structure reveals is that without god there is no man and without man there is no god in fact there is only i and that i which is almighty god is the one in the midst of you all i am he that walk in the midst of the seven golden lampstand that is the Lord in the midst of you all. There's no God somewhere else. If your eyes are pure, your eyes are single, you will see God as the waters cover the sea. His presence covers the you know the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. If your, if your heart is contaminated with the lies of man, you will not discern the fact that God is the one in the midst of the whole earth. So the seven golden candles lampstand reveal this mystery of oneness, the interdependence between God and man. You see, and God, you see, the, the eternal mind seeks to maintain this oneness. Now, the oneness can never be taken away, but it can be taken away in your mind. You can shrink away, you can lose your way and completely forget that I am one with God. You can have the knowledge today and tomorrow you lose it and when you lose it it will look as if you never ever ever had it you can become so poor and miserable by losing this awareness that i am he okay and he says here that you have to return to your first love you have to remember from where you are falling you have to repent now this is a continuous message you hear every moment as you walk upon the face of the earth there's a voice telling you to maintain yourself in this union because if you do not 
align yourself with this understanding what will happen is that you will lose your place among the candlesticks meaning that you lose awareness that i am he if you cannot say that i am he without a shadow of doubt you are in the transgression okay that's why paul writes says examine yourself do you know that you are christ do you know that i am he examine yourself so all that there is all the work of the spirit that is speaking this hour is to align you with the realization that i am one with the lord that is why he says in that day you will know that i am in him okay in that day you know i'm in you and you are in me and i am in you in that day you will know you realize that i am one with almighty god it's not about giving you gold mansions about giving you plenty of money it's about giving you awareness and with that awareness you have all power with that awareness you have all things in heaven and earth are mine you don't need to possess everything physically to own everything okay the, the heart of a man is that he, he wants to gather things on the earth onto his name but you cannot you cannot okay so if you don't repent if you don't repent and do your first works return to your your first love and do your first works you lose awareness of this union you lose your place at the right hand of god okay you lose your way out of the garden of god which is called the paradise of god like adam you are driven away in your own mind out of the garden and when you go out of his presence you suffer tribulation and pain okay now what are the first works you must do he says that you must do your first works what are the first works that you must do your first works is to say I am that I am your first work is the works from the beginning which is just to be just to know that I am he just to confess that I am that I am that is your first work it's not a religious thing from the beginning all you did was say i am that i am okay and when you say that i am that i am out of that pronunciation you created the heavens and the earth out of that declaration you maintain the heavens and the earth and out of that declaration you sit and reign over the whole of creation so i am that i am is your first works is beingness being that which you are okay that is your first works that is all that you can do throughout the eternity to know and keep yourself in this pure consciousness it's purely material purely spiritual consciousness that i am here so this is your first works okay if you keep yourself in this first works which is i am that i am you maintain yourself in the paradise of god spontaneously you are 
the candle, the, the branches of the seven candlesticks. Only in this realization can you perform works that are eternal. I am the vine, you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. See, any work that you do outside of this I am, in unison with the Almighty, anything you do is simply done in the dark. They are what we call vain works, dead works. See, but when you walk in unison with the Lord, then you can do works, works that are eternal. Okay, so the call, the cry of the Spirit, is that you return to your first love, okay, which is the, yourself, your true original self from the beginning. Okay, and you know, do these first works, maintain yourself, walk as Him keep yourself in him he says from the beginning before before this world was you are with me in me you have to keep yourself in this knowledge god keep you amen